What's up guys, this is Brave and I'm back with another review of A Ready to Love. This is Season 7, Episode 5, and the episode is titled The Math Ain't Mathin'. Let's go ahead and jump right into the episode. So, first things first, we already have the three ladies who are on the chopping block. That would be Jeffrey, Marcia, and Corvea. And who went home, you guys? Corvea. I had a feeling that she was going to be the one to go home because she only had one guy vouching for her. Now, as we know, there were more guys interested in Marcia as well as Jeffrey. And the guys really were not feeling Corvea. The only guy who was feeling her was Demario. Now, one thing that I will say about Corvette is that she handled this very well. Um, I did like in her confessional, she was like, listen, if Demario wants to still go out there and date the other ladies, he absolutely can. But at the end of the day, if he wants to come back to me, that is still an option. And as we already know, there's no rules on this show that says that they cannot speak after somebody goes home. So we will see during the reunion if Corvette and Demario may have picked things up. Or if they just left it where it was. Now let's go ahead and move on. Alright, so we actually got a quick conversation between Demario, Tony, and Morgan. And honestly, I feel like nothing happened in that conversation. It's like she was trying to get them to talk, but they were not interested in the conversation. Because she was like, oh, you guys had to make like a difficult decision. How do you guys feel about Corvea going home? And it was like they weren't trying to have this conversation with her. It was very strange. All right, now, here's the thing. We get to this other conversation where it's Mark Anthony, Marcia, Susu, and Jeffrey. And what got me was that uh, Mark Anthony actually remembered some things about Susu, how she has six brothers. But here's the thing. Did y'all peep Jeffrey? Jeffrey was not interested in the conversation anymore because the other ladies were speaking. So I was like, yeah, that's pretty interesting because she did the same thing when Cynthia was new and she came over to talk to Andre. So I've accepted that Jeffrey does not like when the other women may have an interest in the same guy that she does. And I understand that because nobody wants to see the guy that they're interested in talking to different women in their face. But like, girl, you signed up for a TV show like this. So I'm going to go ahead and skip the rest of these conversations because nothing was honestly going on. I feel like this was a lot of filler and fluff because they had nothing else to film right now. So I do want to bring up one thing that Susu said to Mark Anthony though because they were talking about how like the process is hard and blah 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 and then she had brought up the fact that you know because Mark Anthony he doesn't want to date women with children because he had a bad experience with that in the past and I was like huh they must have really had some type of conversation and connection that we did not see and we were not privy to and I feel some type of way about that because if they might be a possible connection, why didn't we see this? Nonetheless, on top of that, I said, well, wait a second, Mark Anthony, because ain't you interested in Jeffrey? And that woman has three kids? Yeah, okay. So next thing you know, Blake pulls Susu to the side. And he basically wants to check in on her, see how she's feeling, see how she's, you know, handling everything, which I actually appreciate it because he clearly knows that she probably got into that argument or confrontation with Jeffrey and for him to check on her I respected it because he could have very well been like well that's women's business I'm not going to be involved you know what I'm saying but he actually checked on her so all right cool next thing you know they all decide that they're going to be dancing at this club I guess I don't know where they are but they all decide to go bump and grind on each other if I'm being honest, this was another unnecessary scene. Honestly, we could have just sent Corvea home and then jumped right to the dates because all of this was filler. All right, let's go ahead and talk about this first date that we see. And that was between Cynthia and Anthony. Now, I will say I'm glad that Anthony's finally getting some camera time. Now, as for Cynthia, she's been getting all the camera time, time since she has gotten here. Um... They were so happy to see each other. They both look really nice. I said, okay, I can kind of see this. They look really good together. Now, I must say the conversation was flowing, and they both could not stop smiling at each other, and she really does like him. Like, even in her confessional, she said that she really liked him. So, I think that they may be a potential match. Now, let's go ahead and move along. All right, y'all, so we get this date between Jeffrey and Demario. Now, first things first. <laughs> I hated her makeup in this date. It is terrible. I'm, I know that I'm not the biggest 
Jeffree fan like that. But honestly, I don't like the way she does her makeup. Secondly, um, when it comes to them talking about the whole boat party and how, you know, they were pretty distant from each other. I'm like, there were multiple factors that played into this. Because number one, not only did they play that game and then Jeffrey got her feet rubbed as well as Kiss Mark Anthony. Here's the thing. She played herself when she went over there to go argue with Susu in front of Demario. And what she could have done instead of that was be like, okay, you know what, Demario? I haven't seen you all day. Like, let's go hang out. Let's go talk over here. Let's see what's going on. But no, you decided to argue with somebody else about a whole other man in front of him do you know how tacky that is now don't worry guys i'm definitely gonna have some heat for demario because the fact that he's literally harping over a kiss that she shared with uh mark anthony as if these are not full-grown adults in this process and they are dating each other yeah people are going to be swapping spit all the time on this show i'm sorry that's the way that it's set up like what are we talking about also the fact that he suggested that you know she could have turned away the kiss it's like yeah but that would have been quite disrespectful and embarrassing to that man if she would have like turned him away like my only question is like jeffrey did you mention to demario that you only had interest in him or something like why is he harping on the fact that he feels like you shouldn't have kissed this man and it's kind of weird because demario sounds like him and jeffrey had a conversation and she made it seem like she wasn't even interested in mark anthony or something like, it's very weird that he's coming with this energy. And then what got me in this conversation is when she's like, you know, you didn't apply pressure while somebody else did. And I'm like, yep, that's true. You can't be back if somebody else is applying pressure while y'all just sitting around. Like, I must say, that is one thing that really annoys me about this show is that we hardly see, especially the men, apply pressure the way that they should be if they're actually interested in these ladies. And I already said in my last review, even though I don't like Blake like that, at least he got Susu a bracelet or something. He like trying because I don't see nobody else trying. They are barely putting in any effort. Now, here goes Demario again talking about some, well, um, how would your kids feel about this? Sir, just walk away from his date. Like, what are you talking about at this point? Just say, you know what? I didn't care for the fact that you kissed this man in front of me. And moving forward, I don't want to date you. Let's just go ahead and nip this in the bud because there is no coming back. Like, we are so early in this process. You've only been on one date with this woman and she got you tripping like this. Jeffrey must have got something. She got something in the conversation. I don't know what's happening in those text messages or what's happened on the line for these phone conversations. But clearly she got the boys in a chokehold. And they are getting upset, okay? And the fact that this ended with this man, this grown man saying that moving forward, he's going to, you know, basically leave her in the dust because, number one, he hasn't seen her without makeup on. And I'm like, well, who have you seen without makeup on? Because please know that your sweetheart, Corvea, she wore makeup every day. Every time we saw Corvea, she had makeup on. Unless y'all maybe done, like, some FaceTiming and we didn't see that. Why are you bringing this up? Then for the simple fact that you said that she was kissing a stranger, sir, this man is on the show the same way you are. So if she would have kissed you, that would have been okay? Stop being a weirdo. Let's go ahead and move on. Now, y'all, who set up this next date? Like, for real, for real. Was this straight up production? Because it's screaming production. You literally have Blake and Blue meeting up with Marcia and Jeffrey. Now, last time that I checked, um, Blue is no longer interested in Marcia. He has friends on her. And then Blake and Jeffrey, there's nothing going on there. So why did we decide to have this group date? Oh, because we want to get some mess started. All right, cool. All right, so firstly, they are in this meditation. There's going to be sound bowls. And they're supposed to be laying down, you know, meditating. Everybody got their eyes closed except for Blake I mean baby's eyes was wide open I said what is happening right now <laughs> like why is this man like this he's talking about some you know those bowls yeah, they were they were really loud because it was right by my ear sir can you just play around just close your eyes just close your eyes 
Now, y'all, why the next activity is for them to make a vision board? This lady over here talking about some, you're going to rip out some images in the magazine. And you're going to, you know, they're going to give you inspiration. If you don't cut it out, you don't have no other task for them to do. So, Marcia wants to know what's going on with everybody because there was tension on the boat. Neither parties want to discuss this. But when they talk about their boards, clearly there's still some issue there. So... Marcia, she goes on to talk about how she has pictures of Rihanna and some Lego blocks and a black lady with a crown. She got all these pictures on her board. We get to uh, Blake. Blake is a bunch of watches on there. And he t- gives his whole spiel about how, you know, time is everything. You want to put in the time so that way you can uh, achieve these other things. And all this stuff about time. And okay, great. It sounded good. Here comes Jeffrey chiming in. Well, it looks like it's materialistic over there. Mind your business. You don't have anything to say to this man at this point. Like, you and Blake need to stay far apart, and we like that, okay? Find what Blue put on his board. Don't even worry about what Blake doing. But no, you want to start it up, and he was not engaging. And I respected that. Blake, thank you for not engaging with Jeffrey. So Blue, he shows off his uh, artwork and it's like fishing and boating and oceans and lakes and all the things that he wants to do with travel and all this stuff, right? Now Marcia has taken interest in this because it's like, ooh, he wants to travel the world. He wants to do this, that, another, and all he needs is me. And I'm like, girl, see, this is the thing. You are not listening. He listed about four or five things that you don't participate in and you won't participate in because you said that's not something for you. Remember that last date that you had? You're not trying to go boating. You're not trying to go fishing. Remember that girl? Like, are you even still on this man's radar? Especially that remark you made about dating men with children. I'm not sure if you're still on his radar. I think he's friend zoned you at this point. So now we get to Jeffrey's artwork or whatever. Now, according to her and her confessional, she feels like her and Blue's artwork aligned. And I'm like, he was talking about seeing the world. Your whole board is about children. What are you talking about? Those two things are not the same. Now, nonetheless, Blue says that he's actually interested in Jeffrey at this point because they both have, you know, family goals and they may have some things that align together. We'll see what works out with that. Now, let's talk about these other dates. So... We get to see Blake and Jonique, right? And honestly, I was like, what is this? Who put these two together? Because I did not see this coming. Um, I must say that I agree with Blake that the age gap that they have, it's clear as day and they are not on the same page. Especially when she starts talking about how she uh, likes to go turn up, have a good time. I don't even think turn up is in Blake's vocabulary. I don't think getting lit is in Blake's vocabulary at this big grown age. His next number is what, 50? That's his next big number? Yeah, he ain't he ain't trying to do that. So there's no point in you trying to even go out with Blake. Now, the conversation definitely started off weird, but she was trying to figure out like what he does. And he's like, you know, I'm a corporate security officer. So that's anything from physical to informational to all these other ranges of security guards. And I'm just like, "Mm, it sounds like you're just a regular old security guard. Like straight up. It sounds like you are the security guard that walks around the corporate office to make sure everyone's safe. Or like the guy who works the front door. Or am I crazy? Nonetheless, like I said, I don't see it for these two. And if I'm being honest, I feel bad for Jonique. I feel like they look at her like as if she's the ghetto girl. So nobody is really taking interest to her. Or am I crazy? Like, I like Jonique. I feel like she's probably the one who's probably being the most herself, being the most authentic. But that is not what these men are interested in for some reason. Now, let's go ahead and talk about this date between Morgan and Tony. So... Morgan looks great as always. I don't know who told Tony to put on his white jacket, but we gonna rock with it. So the date is going good. So at one point, Tony mentioned that he was happy where things might go with him and uh, Morgan. And she's like, oh, so are your kids ready for a stepmom? And he was like, oh, are you ready for that? She's like, well, I'm ready for a partner. And I'm like, ooh, I like that idea of you being ready for a partner. 
But when you have a man who has kids already, you need to be ready for a partner and then some. Because there's going to be times where you may want to do things with him and he has to go to his child's soccer game or he has to go do this or that with his children. So are you ready to really split your time with him and his children? That's my question. So he then asked her who does she want in this process and of course she says that there are a lot of options that she has and she brings up Lyndon. And I'm just like, it's so interesting that she keeps bringing up Lyndon when I just feel like these are two different guys. Tony is well into his 40s, almost 50 years old. The man already has children. Um, He should already be well established at this point. Now you have Lyndon on the other hand. Baby boy is a bartender and he is sharing an apartment with somebody. Two different vibes here. Two different vibes. But that does not mean that Lyndon may be the better man over um, Tony. Now, for me, when I look at the situation, I feel like both of them are not giving anything to these ladies. The ladies have to be oh so vulnerable because that's the word that they love to use. Yet again, I still don't know nothing new about these men. All right, so according to Tony, the reason why he is even doing this process is because he is tired of being lonely, a.k.a. the man is aging out of the game He is now almost 50 years old and he needs to have somebody that will possibly take care of him as he's getting older. No, I'm just kidding. (laughs) That's not exactly what was said, but I'm just throwing in my two cents. Now, according to him, all of his things are in order. His life is in order. The kids are in order. And the only thing missing in his life is, well, love. And Morgan feels like, you know, her life is in order. She's really happy right now. And she's just missing a partner as well. Now, they do share a kiss. So we will see where this goes for Morgan and Tony. All right. So the ladies are meeting up at Tommy's Lounge. And let's just go ahead and talk about it. All the ladies list who they like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who cares about that? Let's talk about who they don't like. Okay. (laughs) So first things first, you have Susu. She says that. She doesn't really see it for Demario because she hasn't really had like a one-on-one conversation with him. And I said, well, you almost had a one-on-one conversation with him. And then Jeffrey rolled up. Remember that? Moving forward, um, the next person I think is Mercedes. And she's not really feeling Demario because he's basically changed since Corvea has left the competition. Now, you already know Jeffrey has something to say about Demario. Because their last interaction was not a good one. She goes on to tell everybody what happened. And then she even brings up how he had texted her and was trying to, you know, see if they could patch things up. Because he felt like they did have some type of spark or whatever. So, Susu asked her some type of question. Don't even remember what it was. But please know that that was invitation for Jeffrey to go ahead and call Susu out for being the men's advocate, as she likes to call her. And was like, you know, do you have any more questions for me? Blah, say, blah, say, blah. And it was definitely a scene of Jeffrey checking Susu. And I'm like, Susu, I'm going to need for you to stand up for yourself. Especially the fact that um, Jeffrey was like, yeah, could you question me and my decisions if I wanted to deal with Blake or not? And it's like, no, 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 girl. Susu, this is when you should have chimed in and said, oh, no, because last time I checked, You rolled up on me and Demario and decided to have this venting session about how you don't like Blake. Yeah, that was you who did that. Nonetheless, you already know that a lot of ladies are not feeling Blake. They feel like he's very standoffish. The fact that he doesn't want any more kids, that's not going to work for a lot of the ladies. Morgan said that he kind of like shut her down because he asked her, do you see a life being happy without children? I don't think he was really trying to shut you down. I think he was just trying to see if y'all were compatible because he doesn't want any more children. And since he has decided that he doesn't want any more children, then yeah, he's just not the guy for you. Let's move on. And that actually brings me to what Susu said about how he's basically only putting the energy into who he wants to be interested in, which I feel like that is what most people are doing. They are supposed to be figuring out who is for them and who isn't. And he don't want more kids. And there is five women who want kids. Those five are no longer his options. If there is women who don't want to date a man with children. Okay, 
that dwindles it down even more. So I do understand where Susu is coming from when she says that he's going to put his energy where he wants to because he's trying to find someone who aligns with him, which is technically what the process is. Because let's be honest, I feel like a lot of times when it comes to ready to love, a lot of people are not listening. They're not listening to the people that they're talking to because everyone's goal is to make it to the end. No, the whole goal is that you find someone who you want to be your partner. And that brings me to Mark Anthony because a lot of the ladies don't like him. Now, I can't think of which lady it was. It might have been Cynthia who said that she's not interested in Mark Anthony because he doesn't want to date someone who has children. Oh, you know what that makes me think of? Jeffrey. Because Jeffrey, you just sat up here and put all your little eggs in Mark Anthony's basket, yet he doesn't even want to date a woman who has children. So what are we doing here? You think you're going to change his mind? Like, I really feel like instead of filtering out who pe- who are actually compatible and who would actually work for each other's lifestyle, everybody's just like, no, I want to keep two to three options so that way I can make it to the end. But yeah, you make it to the end of a TV show, but you don't walk away with a partner. Okay, I guess. <laughs> if that's the way you guys are going to play the game. Because, for example... This show may end this um at the end of the season we get to the reunion and we may see Demario and Corvea. We may see Susu and Blake. Who knows? Because you know some people they do continue their connection outside of the show. But nonetheless, the possibilities for the elimination round is gonna be Demario, Blake, and Mark Anthony. Alright, so the first person that we see is Jonique. She's gonna be taking out Demario. One thing that I will say is that I love the fact that Jonique, whenever she's on a date with these guys and she gets there first, she always orders them a drink. I say, you know what? Look at Jonique. They are sleeping on her. Now, I personally thought that Demario would have been interested in Jonique because I feel like they might have some similarities. But of course, his head was all on Corvea, so he wasn't paying her no attention. Now, if we hop on over to who else is up for the chopping block, we have Cynthia taking out Blake. And what threw me off was the fact that he was like, yeah, I was surprised to see her there. Why are you surprised to see Cynthia there? Are you letting the cat out the bag that production tells y'all to just show up and then you don't know who you're going to have a date with? Is that what's happening here? Now, of course, we already knew who was going to be going home, and that was Demario. So Demario goes home, Blake lives to fight another day, and I will talk to y'all in the next one. Honestly, I did not enjoy this episode it was very blah, like the whole beginning, it was a waste of my time, yeah, let's just, let's just hope that next week is better, so go ahead and like, comment, and subscribe to my channel, and I will talk to y'all the next one, bye guys.